Hey guys, today I wanted to try something a little bit different and give you all a review of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, a game that I've been playing quite a bit of recently. For those who don't know, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is a 100 man free for all battle royale first and third person shooter in which 100 people are dropped from an airplane across the length of an 8x8 kilometer island to deal with their opponents in a constantly shrinking zone with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Uh, this odd title is a reference to the creator, Player Unknown, who is responsible for the extremely popular DayZ mod for Arma 3, as well as being one of the major contributors to Sony's H1Z1, and his talent really shines even in this early access title. The game's been available on Steam for a little over a month now, and has received three smaller updates as well as one major update, which included bug fixes, graphic patches, additional content, and more. Uh, the game costs 30 bucks right now, which seems like a pretty reasonable price from my perspective, uh, which I'll explain now. So first up, uh, how does it look? Well, I want to start by saying that the game uses the Unreal 4 engine, which is a nice change of pace from all these Unity games that we've been seeing coming through early access. I think it's going to give it more potential in the long run, though at the moment it's really just uh, something that's good to keep in mind. The game definitely looks tolerable from a graphical standpoint, uh, though I'd say it's hampered pretty severely by the constant reuse of the same several low-poly assets, which you'll probably notice repeated throughout the video. This is often the case in a lot of early access games, of course, uh, but it's still something that players are going to notice, and I think detracts from immersion and enjoyment a little bit. Hopefully, uh, by adding more variety to the building types and the layouts, the game will be able to better display the power of the engine it's on, um, but I think a fairly serious overhaul is going to be required before the game can be described as good looking. For now though, the shadows look decent, the draw distance is solid, the pop-in isn't insufferable, and the character and weapon models are actually pretty good looking. I know one thing that is a concern for a lot of people is how the game runs. Um, for an early access title, I think it runs pretty darn well, uh, especially considering that it's not terrible looking. I mean, I have a higher end system, and with a GTX 980 and 16 gigs of RAM, uh, the game runs around 60 frames a second for me almost all the time, except in a couple moments, like sometimes when I'm dropping in from the plane or the beginning of the match. Um, the lag at the beginning of matches usually only lasts like a minute or two, and it's something that the developers have said they're actively working on, but it can definitely be a little bit frustrating as the early rush for guns and dominance of an area is really a time where you want the game to be functioning optimally. That said, it's something that can be adjusted to fairly easily, and I think it's acceptable considering the title's early access status and age. The game's very scalable, and the developers have already released several patches specifically targeting lower-end systems, and just in general, the game seems to run fine on lower settings. Um, I did some testing using my old system running a GTX 550 Ti with 8 gigs of RAM, and it can still pull off a solid 30 frames per second at low settings. Overall, I think the game is pretty well optimized with all things considered, and I feel fairly good about the promises the developers have made to continue supporting the game going forward. <clears throat> now, audio is something I'm a bit of a stickler on, and I want to say that this is something I really have to compliment the developers on. I feel like the weapon sounds are really solid, with each gun having different effects when they're fired and directional audio playing a massive role in survival. Uh, footsteps sound distinctly different based on the material that the player is walking on, and it can lead to some really tense and exciting moments. I can't even count the number of times that I've heard a car pulling up followed by footsteps and the door opening, and it saved me from an early grave. One thing I will say though is that a bit of a drawback in this game is that there's not nearly enough sliders for controlling those audio settings. Personally, I'd like to see individual sliders for controlling vehicles, weapons, footsteps, and objects, but all of those are currently clumped under the frustratingly simple sound effects slider. Fortunately, this is an early access game, and audio sliders seem like a rather minor change, so hopefully this is something that the developers will take care of in the future. Gameplay is kind of interesting in this game. Battlegrounds is definitely a game of hot and cold. You can play the game for 25 minutes without seeing a single other player, and then you may run into six in the next minute and a half. Because the map is so large, and because players are so spread out, each match can play out really differently, and the pace of the game can vary pretty wildly. I realize this may be a turnoff to some people, but personally I find the game to be really tense, uh, and many times I've been lulled into a false sense of security by a lack of engagements in a match, only to be punished by a swift bullet to the back of the head for slacking off. 
Uh, this has led to me being constantly on my toes, trying to make as little noise as possible, and ready to fire at the slightest provocation, even when I think I'm safe. The gunplay itself is really solid, featuring the usual suspects of pistols, SMGs, shotguns, assault rifles, and snipers. This is diversified by the fact that there's three of each weapon type, as well as one or two special weapons that don't really fit into a typical category, uh, and also melee weapons to boot. Uh, the game also features a weapon attachment system, which allows you to collect different magazines, scopes, silencers, and more for your guns to tailor them to your personal playstyle throughout the match. Swapping out your mods is really quick and simple, and can be done er even during some pretty tense moments. Uh, and the benefits of doing it are pretty immediate and massive. Uh, another nice feature for the gameplay here is that the player can play in either first or third person. This allows for accurate firing as well as the ability to have a good view at all times. Vehicles are also a major plus, with the game featuring a buggy, motorcycles, cars, and even a boat. The vehicles handle simply, and while they're occasionally subject to typical multiplayer physics, generally serve their purpose well. One element I really enjoy is that the vehicles have a gas tank that can empty fairly quickly on a cross-country jaunt. This means that you'll have to swap between vehicles somewhat frequently, or try to find a gas can that you can use to top it off yourself. This prevents players from simply picking up a vehicle and driving all over the map until the match is basically over. Uh, another excellent element in this game is the constantly shrinking play zone. I mentioned this earlier, but at the beginning of the match, the whole island is fair game for the players to exploit to their heart's content. However, as the match goes on, a circle appears that will slowly shrink more and more and more the longer the game goes on. This adds a much needed impetus to prevent players from camping, and also makes the end of the match my favorite part of the game, an extremely tense game of cat and mouse. These final moments of each match are by far the most exciting, in my opinion, and if you can survive long enough to take part in them, are some of the most tense, vindicating, and emotional moments that I've experienced in a game in recent memory. The multiplayer in this game is also solid, featuring three different game modes. Solo queue, which is a 100-man free-for-all match, duo queue, which features 50 teams of two, or squad queue, which is 25 four-player teams. Beyond these game modes, there's only one map so far, but considering its size, this really hasn't been an issue for me. The developers have said they're working on a second one right now, so hopefully it'll be available soon to help mix things up. In general, uh, network latency hasn't been an issue for me at all in multiplayer, though, um, except for in the aforementioned moments at the very beginning of the match where there's some minor rubber banding that can occur. Uh, <clears throat> however, this might not actually be a network-related issue. Um, as the developers have said in a couple updates that this is an issue with the code, I'm not clear on what's the rubber banding and what is this code issue they're referring to, but they've said they're attempting to fix it, though it's going to take some time. Uh, I will say, though, that I haven't had any moments of feeling like I was killed when my like opponent should have died, or that my shots weren't registering or anything like that, so from my perspective, the netcode seems pretty solid, and the matchmaking is really something to behold. The average wait time for any match that I've queued for has been no more than a minute, I'd say, and from the time when I actually like get a match to actually landing boots on the ground off the plane is usually less than another two minutes. Considering how insane the like matchmaking and then uh, lobby wait times were in other Battle Royale games, like the culling, this is definitely something that should be commended. That said, it is worth noting that the game is probably at the peak of its popularity right now, and the matchmaking may suffer if there's a drop-off in the player base. Overall, though, the multiplayer seems really solid considering the ridiculous player count, and the upcoming changes to the netcode should make things even better. All that said, in the last two weeks, I've played about 40 hours of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, basically filling any gaps in my day between recording and editing other episodes and my full-time job with non-stop matches. This is pretty surprising considering I'm not really that big of a fan of competitive multiplayer titles. I think that the thing that truly hooks me here is the intensity of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and the feeling of wanting to jump back in and try to do better every time that you're killed. This feeling of having high stakes and wanting to find a new game after every single death really makes you play and think more strategically, and it makes for a really enjoyable experience. At a $30 price point, if you're someone who's interested in this type of game, I recommend it very strongly. For those who may be kind of on the fence, I'd probably recommend waiting a few months to see what kind of updates come out, and then maybe take another peek at the game, but for now, I'd probably recommend holding off. 
On a scale of 1 to 10, I would give this game a solid 7 for those who are fans of the genre, and probably a slightly above average 6 for those who are more on the fence. Personally, I look forward to continuing to play the game as its development continues, and have pretty high but reasonably tempered hopes for what it'll finally come, uh, come to be. That is going to do it, though, for my first ever video review. If you guys enjoyed the video and want to see more like it, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below so that I know. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.